Okay, so now we're going to create a event handler on the end of this, and this is focus. So we go ahead and create a function inside of here, and then we pull that down. So this essentially means that we are selecting these input fields, adding this attribute, and then once this field uh, here, or the, the input type with email is selected, or it is in focus, we want to do something. So again, this is only applying to all email fields. So whenever an email field is in focus, we want to do this. So uh, let's go ahead and write out what we want this to do. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to check if the value is equal to the email default value. And if so, get rid of the contents of it. Uh, for example, if we were to go ahead and type, let's just, if we were to go ahead and click this, um, we want to actually get rid of all the contents unless uh, there is any other content other than this original message in there. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to create an if statement and the condition is, uh, again, another selector. We're selecting this, which only applies to the current email field. So for example, if you had two different email fields on a page, this would only select the current one that's in focus. So we want to say this, if this dot val is equal to um, email default. So if it equals the original text as we click in, i.e. enter your email address, then we want to wipe it. We want to wipe the contents. So all we do is we say this dot attribute, and again we choose the value attribute, but this time we set this to nothing. So now what's going to happen is when we click it, it disappears, um, but it only disappears if it's the original content. For example, uh, if I was to go ahead and now type in alex at phpacademy.org and navigate away and click back in, it doesn't remove it. If we hadn't of uh, included this functionality here, let's just go and get rid of that. In fact, go and get rid of this here and get rid of this here. Uh, what's going to happen is now when we click in, yes, it disappears, but when we go ahead and type in an email address and navigate away, then navigate back in, it re-wipes uh, the field. So we use this if statement to determine the current value matching the default value, uh, and therefore that's the only time we need to actually wipe it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just down here append on another event handler, and this is blur, i.e. when the user moves away from the field. Uh, so when uh, blur occurs, we want to uh, handle or call back another function, and this time we want to check it for nothing. Now the only time we want to re-put uh, this text back into the field, uh, you'll notice that at the moment when we click in, click out, we don't get this original value back in, uh, so we le it's been left as blank. But what we want to happen is if we say type something and then delete it and then navigate back away from it, we want the uh, default text to be placed back in. So again, we need another if statement and obviously our block there. Now the condition this time is the same uh, as the other one, this dot val, but this time is if it's equal to if it's equal to nothing, uh, then we want to carry out an action. So when we navigate away from this field by either clicking away um, or tabbing away from a field to another field or another element on the page, uh, we check if this value is equal to nothing. And if the value is equal to nothing, we want to go ahead and set the attribute value to back to the email default. So again, this dot attribute, much like we did here, but this time instead of uh, removing it, we want to put it back to the original value. So value and this is email default. So uh, again, uh, if it's empty, we're just changing the, e the value of this to the email default. So let's refresh and let's click in and click away again. You'll automatically notice that what we've done has taken in, been taken into effect. We click in and we click away. Now when I click in and type something and navigate away, nothing happens because it's not e the value of this is not equal to nothing. When I click back in, you'll notice that the uh, nothing disappears because we've already checked this up here. Uh, if the value is, is the email default value, then blank the field. Uh, it's not the default value, so it doesn't blank, uh, and therefore we keep this email address in here. So that's the um, input type selector. You'll notice that if I was to go ahead and duplicate this uh, email field, so if I was to go ahead and duplicate this again, so for example, confirm email, 
and we'll just change the well the type still email. Uh, what's going to happen is is we have the same functionality for both fields now. We have the same functionality for this one as we do for this one. So we can go ahead and type in alex at phpacademy.org, navigate away, nothing happens. We can come in here again uh, and navigate away, or we can go alex at phpacademy.org, navigate away, and we've got two email addresses with um, the message, original message obviously disappeared, uh, and we're just left with these. So using our uh, our attribute selector like I said at the start of the tutorial we can use this for absolutely any element uh, that supports this um, but for now I've just decided to create something that was a bit more applicable uh, to real life as opposed to just talking about you know different elements we can select uh, and I think this is a really good example of how to do this and also notice that we've used absolutely no code uh, JavaScript code uh, in our uh, main file we've used jQuery to handle all of this so we've eliminated the need for any JavaScript to be mixed in with our HTML uh, and like I said this is cross compatible now so wherever you include selectors.js and jQuery.js this functionality will be available